Well, I guess this is it. This is the much hyped mod on YouTube, Portal Reloaded. Um, <laughs> I have to admit, I'm not having a good first impression because for some reason they disabled the developer options button, but they like they didn't take it out of the menu rotation with the arrow keys. But it's also still in the developer console. They, I don't know what's going on there. If you have the console launch option, you're able to open the console, um, which I needed in order to bind my zoom key because they also removed toggle zoom for some reason. Um, so. I'll say that's not a great first impression, but uh, I have not actually opened this game yet, so I'm probably going to spend the first couple of minutes fiddling with the sensitivity, and I will be right back. Hello, test subject. Four, five, zero, nine. You have been in stasis for... Sixteen days. And... Four decades. Welcome to the Aperture Science Long-Term Human Storage Vault. You have been selected to take part in a very special testing course. Federal regulations require us to inform you that the testing ahead may result in slight cases of sore throat or blurry vision. Or death. <laughs> if you experience any of the aforementioned side effects, please oh, do not hesitate that. to write them down in your test report. I think the sensitivity is that bad. Well, I don't even know. I'll work it out. Oh no, it's way too slow. This vacuum tube will take you to your testing area. You will be further instructed there. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> I think it's six. I hate pausing this freaking game every two seconds so to fix my sensitivity. I said I would do that, but then I cut the video differently. You know how it is. I'm new to this thing. Two loading screens. Alright. It doesn't look bad. I quite like the way it looks. Time travel testing check. Huh? Here we are. Welcome to the. Uh, and also, this is probably gonna drive some people crazy, but. Uh... Any messages there we go. will now guide I you through your test today. The door in front of you is programmed to open in approximately twenty years. Oh. This test can be solved in two different ways. Option one: wait patiently. Option two. Time travel to the future. Hmm. The choice is yours. However, okay. if you prefer time travel, the Enrichment Center will provide you the means to pursue that option. The time portal will open and testing will begin in three, two, one. Here it is. Welcome to the future. Time traveling through portals will be an essential part of this testing course. In order to help you distinguish between the present and the future, this part of the Enrichment Center has been left untouched for the last 20 years. <laughs> you may see some signs of decay. Don't worry, the Enrichment Center is designed to withstand centuries without proper maintenance. Find a way to exit the chamber. So I guess the narrative is this all destroyed now, and then in the past this would not be destroyed. Okay. So, I guess I just said that one of my big problems with uh, time travel maps is like they don't make sense. Like, you know, why would they make a chamber that's all destroyed, for example? Or why would they make one in the past version that's just completely unsolvable? Um, but I guess in the narrative here, it kind of makes more sense because it's 
Like, this is the time travel track. Like, they designed around this. I guess if that makes any sense. Welcome back to the present. If you are ever unsure which timeline you're in, simply observe your environment. The present should always look a bit cleaner than the future. Okay. This Aperture Science Test Subject Teleportation Device will dematerialize your body and rematerialize it in the next chamber. This process is absolutely safe. Usually. <laughs> On to the next one. These next chambers will involve cube and button-based testing with the perks of time travel. A cube placed in the present will appear in the same position in the future. Moving a cube in the present will automatically update the location of the same cube in the future. Uh, I spent all that time finding my zoom key and it doesn't even work. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. I guess this particle effect isn't too objectionable. I thought um, in the uh, in the video presentations it looked kind of janky. Um, But it doesn't look too bad. I don't know why it's not like actually moving the one in the past, well, in the future, because it, it'd just be super hard to implement that. Alright, so first let me pass for the first fizzler. I should still be here. This future version of the cube can be moved freely without affecting its counterpart in the present. It will stay wherever you leave it, as long as the present cube's destiny is not altered in any way. Ah. Good. Please continue to the next chamber. So I guess that makes uh, because I c if I can move this one through this blank fizzler, then uh, it wouldn't do anything to the one in the in this version. So I don't think I can actually exit from this area. I have to I have to exit from here. Understanding the concept of cause and effect will be vital to solving the upcoming tests. Got it. Simply put, everything you do in the present has an impact on the future, but not the other way around. See, this is also one of the main differences between this map series that I would, um, and like other multiverse time travel stuff in the workshop is this sort of uh, concept with like, okay, um, the cause and effect happening. Does it just doesn't happen on the workshop? You don't see it. <laughs> I doubt I'm able to move it through. Nice try, but bringing a present cube to the future violates the laws of causality and is therefore impossible. What about the other way? Ah? Apparently this works. Oh, but I moved it so I can't. And it bounced around. <laughs> Good thinking. While it is impossible to bring a present cube to the future, this clever trick allows you to have two versions of the same cube in one timeline. This will prove to be very useful in future chambers. Got it. I don't really know how that makes sense causality-wise, but puzzle design-wise, I'll allow it. <laughs> Up. And then in this version, it's the same. So I need some way to destroy the cube, let's move it off that button. What if I do this? Let's leave it here. Because when I touch the regular cube, it will make this one go away. So if I wait a button down with this one, that goes away. There we go. Got it. That's pretty smart. I like Always those remember, so far. If you change the destiny of an object in the present, the future version of that object will be affected as well. 
If this sounds too complicated, you're in luck. The next chamber will only heavily rely on your understanding of this very basic concept. <laughs> okay, so that closes the door and also raises stairs. Here I can't get up there, but now it's tilted, so I can. Looks like this is the same. Now there's music. So this will allow me to get the regular cube. So I probably want to do a similar thing here. Right? No! I have to follow the sign. Yeah. I didn't see that was actually a ledge. I thought it was just like a random sign. For whatever reason. Now I take it back. Use it to weigh down the staircase. Now this removes it, and I have the cube. Good. By now, you hopefully understand the concept of cause and effect, and how cubes behave in different timelines. Now, let's move on to something more interesting. And now, for the moment you've been waiting for. Aperture Science proudly presents the Triple Portal Device. This marvelous uh -huh. device will allow you to place three different portals. For now, however, to introduce you to the concept of portals in different timelines, the time portals will be placed for you. Cute crosshair. I'm enable the D lights as well as cute. I think these pits exist. Yep. So I think the idea is like a this, portal and placed still there. in the present will appear on the same surface in the future. I don't think there's much else that I can do. A portal placed in the future will not override its existing location. Good. Thinking in four dimensions means not only knowing where to place your portals, but also when. when? What's going on here? Let's pop back in here. Nothing? Ah! Okay. Please uh, ignore that. Broken glass the decay of this facility over the past 20 years may have caused the destruction of some portal surfaces. There it is. Try to find a way around it. It's the gimmick. I knew it would happen. So let's say time portal only, which is, I would say, a little bit clunky, but sure. Um, so there's one big one on the ceiling. If I go here, the blue one, Blue one is still there, so. Okay. Now the time portal is here. But the orange one is gone. Alright, yep. Yeah. <laughs> they said this would get confusing. It's getting confusing. Um. So there isn't too much that I can do besides this, I think. So let's pop through. Um. Just leave an orange portal there, maybe. Why does it sound like someone flushing a toilet? Ah, okay, that's gone. So I have to get over here in the presence and push the button. Myself. Uh, but I mean, it's not like I could just shoot the loop portal and go through there. Right? So, how do I get over here in the present version? <coughs> Have a think. I 
orange. Like, if I have my orange bottle here, and then I go through here. The orange bottle doesn't exist, because it was never created over here. You can't shoot through it, but that seems to... Uh, I don't know. I'm just wandering around, really. This is confusing, but like in the best way. <laughs> also, recording is kind of distracting as well. It's hard to understand what is going on. All I know is that this thing... Um, that glass being there doesn't really gate much, because if I just got over there in the first place, I just push the button, walk through, and then I'm there. So, well, excuse me. If I got over here, I push the button, I walk through, and now I'm here. So. So it's not a curiosity, what if I, like, have both portals there? And then I put one on the impossible surface. And now I look through here. Now I have a single portal. That's interesting. This is a fairly beginning test, but I'm not sure what to, what the last step is, right? So I have, the last step is I have a portal here, already, and then I have like, a portal somewhere else. So this means I have to have a portal here, and then without walking through it, um, like, emerge from somewhere else. So I think what this means is, I put the portal here, and then I have the other portal over here. But I have it set up in such a way, so, like, right now, bleh, right now my orange portal is there. Um, because if I go through the blue portal, let's do this. So this does not move the other blue portal. So if I would walk through that, I would come out over here, and then if I press the time portal, I would come out over there, and I'd be able to walk through the portals, right? I'm trying to see forwards. I go here, and then I walk through this, and now I'm at the end. Yes! Okay, that did, that did work, as I thought it would. It took a while to figure it out, but I got Nicely it. Nicely done. Take note. Because time portals exist in exactly the same location in both timelines, they can only be placed on surfaces which are intact in both the present and the future. This next chamber will involve the concept of momentum-based traveling through portals. You go in fast, you come out fast. Simple enough. It seems to like to spit me out of the uh, ruined version of the chamber. So where am I going? Where would be a good spot to go? So I can go up here in both versions, I think. Just give it a look. And here, in this version, there's a fizzler, but if I... That's a pretty cool push. Okay, there's still a fizzler there. So what's actually different? Um, is there anything different? Or is it just using both timelines at once? I also changed the portal ghost to be just an ellipse, which is, uh, I don't know, that's interesting. So is this enough? Is the gimmick is that this is not enough flingy? It's not enough to do anything! Oh, but that is a higher, that would be a higher way to jump into this area. So if Touching I the material emancipation grills will cause any ordinary portal to fizzle. Time portals are not affected. If the portal closes in the present, it will also close in the future. So think about where and when to pass through them. Got it. God, this game is really confusing. <laughs> um, I'm liking it so far. So, what I need to do is have one here, and then I can shoot the next one in there. But in order to arrive at this area, need to fling in from somewhere, which means going through a fizzler. So... So basically, where do I arrive from? Do I arrive from the present or the future? 
if I arrive from the present, it would delete both my portals, right? So if I go from the future, I have a portal here and then I already, and then I walk through into the present, it would still be there. Okay. Maybe? Sort of? Because how do I attach to that? <laughs> I don't I don't see that part. And I fall. Oh, I fall down hole. I didn't mean to do that. And I also I did it again. just like a surface to help you get out, I think it is. So basically what can I do from here? I can place this portal and then I can just walk back as well. And then I can move that time portal. So... If I do something like this, the orange portal is... Uh, I could leave it in the pit, actually. I probably have to. Now I have two spare portals, doesn't matter what I do with them. As long as there's another spot in the pit. Right? So, this doesn't matter. It's just all the same. Yeah! Okay. Cool. Outstanding. Now that you know all the essentials. How about shooting some time portals of your own? Oh, uh, sure. I'm not confused enough. And I cut the recording here, by the way, and uh, I'll be back in a second.